You're watching your favorite international show, but it's difficult to enjoy on a small screen. You wonder, how can I get this on the big screen? You have to use a VPN to watch it, and you don't know how to put your TV on the VPN. You realize maybe your router can use a VPN, only to discover your router can't do it, or the configuration is just too difficult. What if I told you there is a simple to use router that makes this situation and others like it as easy as possible? Well, it sure is. Allow me to introduce you to EncRouter. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in this episode, we're reviewing the EncRouter AX1800A. EncRouter is a company based in Stockholm, Sweden, with a simple yet noble mission make VPNs accessible to any connected device for the average consumer. For them, this meant integrating hardware and software to create an easy to use native VPN solution. Out of that mission, the EncRouter AX1800A was born. This router has a custom operating system called EncRouter OS that they built in-house. The WireGuard powered VPN is built in and special configuration is not required. It's as simple as tapping a button to turn on your VPN, to turn it off for all or some of your personal connected devices. Not only did they create this operating system, but also the business infrastructure to host VPN servers across the world, effectively creating their own market vertical for consumer VPN hardware and global VPN endpoints. Being in the hardware and software business from end to end means they have control over the VPN process and therefore better guarantees to ensure privacy when using their VPN servers. Now that we understand EncRouter and their mission, let's take a look into what they've created. Starting with the packaging, we open the box to see two informational cards to help us get started with EncRouter, support information and warranty information. Next, we have the router itself in a mostly matte black finish with some reflective accents to it and four large antennas. Then we have our power cable that comes with the appropriate electrical adapter for your country. In particular, a US-based one here. Lastly, we get a complementary ethernet cable we can use to hook up our EncRouter to our modem or connect the device to one of its LAN ports. Taking a closer look at the router, we have a 12 volt, 1.5 amp barrel plug for power, five one gigabit ethernet ports, one for WAN and four for LAN, a reset button, a USB 3.0 port, a sync button, our default router and connection information on the bottom and a LED indicator on the front. We've taken a look at the outside. So now let's talk about what's inside. For our internals, it runs an IPQ6000 quad core 1.2 gigahertz CPU with 512 megabytes of DDR3L RAM and 128 megabytes of NAND flash storage. For Wi-Fi, as you'd expect, it's 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6 with two two by two transit and receive radio chains capable of 2.4 and five gigahertz. What you can't see is each EncRouter comes with one year of free VPN usage. Afterwards, you will pay for it as you would with any subscription, which you can check out in the link below. While doing a bit of research on this router, I saw an Amazon reviewer noticed how similar the EncRouter looks to the GLiNet Flint. Comparing them both, they have the same physical form factor, ports, and specs. Given that, it seems the EncRouter AX1800A is a white label customized version of the GL iNet Flint or the GL AX1800, and therefore using hardware that's been well-tested and well-received by consumers. To me, it's insignificant that their router design is not completely original. It's actually somewhat commonplace in the industry. Rather, their tailored and unique user experience is where I personally see the value in what EncRouter has brought to the market. The hardware simply lays out the performant, capable foundation for usability that enables EncRouter's mission. With that, let's dive into the software and the EncRouter experience. I plugged in the router to the network, plugged in the barrel plug to the router and the outlet, and then waited for it to boot up. Setup was simple and all mobile app-based, whether it be iOS or Android. Simply go to the App Store or Play Store, download the EncRouter application, and once it's done, tap the app and you're ready to begin setting it up. As I'm typically used to a web-based interface, tried to plug into the network and go to the router's IP address. However, I noticed there is no web interface that you often see with most routers. While other routers certainly do have mobile apps, 
Only having a mobile app indicated to me the engineering team spent their energy and efforts to curate a mobile-first experience that makes the most sense for most users this day and age. Looking at how they've designed the app, my inclinations hold true. Once you open the app, you're prompted to sign up or log in if you already have an account. After clicking the sign up button, you put in your email address, tap register, and you'll be sent a one-time password to your email. Put that six-digit one-time password in, and you're redirected to a new screen to add your Ink Router to your account. To add the Ink Router, tap the ENC AX1800A label, where you'll follow some well-guided prompts. The instructions will verify you received the power and Ethernet cable with your Ink Router, and then have you plug in the Ink Router to an outlet and connect the Ethernet cable to the WAN port and modem. Once you've done those steps, tap Next until you are asked for permission to access the local network. Grant the permission and continue to the next step. Then, you'll be prompted to enter a QR code manually or scan it with your camera. Make sure the app has the proper permissions to access your camera. Then, scan the QR code on the bottom of your Ink Router, which then kicks off an upgrade and reboot process. If this doesn't work the first time, simply try scanning the QR code again. When this completes, the app will search for an Ink Router Setup Wi-Fi network to continue the setup. Tap Join when prompted. After some time, you'll see your initial Wi-Fi name and password, and to write that down so that you can connect to the Wi-Fi when the process completes. When tapping Finish the Setup button, you'll be asked to confirm your Wi-Fi password. Enter your password, and the app will ask you to join the final Wi-Fi network. After tapping Join and waiting, you'll be directed to the home page of your Ink Router so you can begin to customize it. Managing your Ink Router is just as easy as setting it up. On the home page, you're provided with a default group. These groups allow you to collect your devices together and connect them to specific VPN endpoints concurrently. So if you want your TV to connect to Europe to watch your favorite European shows and your laptop to Asia to access content restricted to that region, you can do that with these groups. To create a group, you tap the plus button at the bottom Give your group a name, then tap Create. Afterwards, click the new group you made and tap the VPN button. There, you can choose a VPN endpoint you want this group to connect to, and tapping it will establish a connection to that VPN server. Of course, if you want to change VPN endpoints or remove it for the group, this is possible as well. Now that you have a group, you need to add clients to it. Tapping the Clients tab, you can see all your clients including online and offline ones. Tap a client, and at the bottom, tap Select Group. Here, you tap your new group, click Save, and you're done. Your device is now using that VPN endpoint. In addition, you may have noticed, if you don't want a certain device to use any VPN, you can tap the Bypass VPN routing switch, and it will then always send your internet connection through your internet service provider, regardless of what group it's in. You can also do this by the Settings page and select more than one client to exclude devices from VPN. Here, you simply tap the plus button where a pop-up will show all your clients that you can add. Tap the client that you want to add and now it will not use any VPN. You can remove it just as easily by tapping the minus button next to the device. These settings are one and the same, so enabling VPN bypass on the client directly adds it to this list of VPN excluded devices. When combined together, the features above make up a rudimentary form of split tunneling in a simple yet effective manner. With the groundwork laid out, I'd personally like to see this improved, where users can specify what devices and websites they want to use the VPN, not just for all traffic for that device, all while adhering to their clean user interface. One unique and recent feature I'd like to showcase here is Homelink, or a simplified form of site-to-site -site VPN. Homelink makes any Ink Router around the world a VPN server. All you need to do is enable Homelink on both Ink Routers, and then invite or receive an invite from another user with an Ink Router. After both parties accept, your Ink Routers are Homelinked, and you can set each other's Ink Routers as VPN endpoints. This comes with benefits that you don't get with a regular VPN server. First, you can access devices behind the other Ink Router as if they were on your primary Ink Router network. This can be useful if you need to access devices like a personal media server that is behind another home network. Also, this can be useful for managing a parent or relative's home network, especially if they're not tech savvy. 
Another benefit is better access to geo-based content, as VPN servers are often targeted by streaming services. You're not always guaranteed access to their content. However, when connecting through another ENC router via home link, you can use its internet connection to reliably access streaming services and shows within that region. This is because home networks are assigned residential IP addresses, as opposed to data center IP addresses given to VPN servers. Therefore, it looks like you're accessing their content from a home and not a data center. Encrowder set up one of their routers for me to home link with. And from my experience, I found this feature to be very cool and useful. The last feature I will cover is creating a new Wi-Fi network. Tapping the Wi-Fi icon in the bottom middle, you can add new Wi-Fi networks. Tapping the plus add new button, you're presented with options to give it a name, a password, Use the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequencies, enable WPA3, WPA2 mix mode, and to disable the network upon creation. Mix mode is useful for any devices that are older that cannot connect over WPA3. Then, once you save it, you'll have another Wi-Fi network. There is a bit of nuance here I'd like to clarify. This doesn't exactly create a new network, but rather broadcasts your existing network over a different Wi-Fi name. With that, this feature won't create a guest Wi-Fi network for you. When you connect to this new Wi-Fi name, you'll be connected to the same network as all of the other devices that are on the main network. This is unfortunate, but I've been told this is a feature they are working on. I did poke around the app to see if you can create any new networks, and sadly, I was not able to find this. I did see in the advanced settings that you can change your LAN settings to use a different network range, but this would change your existing network range and not create a new network and a new range. Lastly, under Router Preferences, you can change the alias or name of your ENC router, and you can invite others to manage your ENC router or invite others to access your home network via home link. Now that we covered what it can do, let's see how well it performs with speed tests. In order to account for variance, I tested against different servers and averaged the results. Doing a speed test directly on the ENC router, I got close to my ISP's full download and upload speed with 487.44 megabits per second down and 52.07 megabits per second up. I also tested my speeds over Ethernet and Wi-Fi using my Wi-Fi 6 capable MacBook Pro and iPhone using the same methodology. Wired in, I got 416.3 megabits per second down and 47.12 megabits per second up. With Wi-Fi on my MacBook Pro, I got 97.51 megabits per second down and 26.51 megabits per second up. Using Wi-Fi on my iPhone, I got 70.17 megabits per second down and 26.63 megabits per second up. As expected, the best speeds here are on the router itself and on my MacBook Pro over Ethernet. Over Wi-Fi, the results follow my expectations as well, where the wireless would be better on my MacBook Pro than on my iPhone with a larger antenna. I would expect faster speeds. However, I was not next to the router and I have a noisy radio frequency environment, so I'm not surprised at the decrease in speed. To test my speed over a VPN, I chose Chicago, Illinois as my VPN endpoint to see how well it does between two endpoints in the same country. Testing on the ENC router, I got 407.15 megabits per second down and 45.89 megabits per second up. Testing this connection over Ethernet, I got 395.97 megabits per second down and 45.79 megabits per second up. Lastly, over Wi-Fi, I got a 106.38 megabits per second down and 35.26 megabits per second up on my MacBook Pro and 67.3 megabits per second down and 19.55 megabits per second up on my iPhone. The results here have the same trend via different connection methods as my ISP connection test, which is to be expected. Looking purely at the numbers between the ISP and VPN scenarios, here are the speed differences between the tests. On the ENC router, there was a 16% decrease in down speed and a 12% decrease for up speed. Wired in with my MacBook Pro, there was a 5% decrease in down speed and a 3% decrease in up speed. For Wi-Fi on my MacBook Pro, there was a 9% increase in down speed and a 33% increase in up speed. For Wi-Fi on my iPhone, there was a 4% decrease in down speed and a 27% decrease in up speed. Most of the scenarios above 
fall in line with my expectations for a speed decrease, except for Wi-Fi on my MacBook Pro. It seems my tests were faster when using a VPN as opposed to my ISP. This is clearly an outlier I'd throw out. Looking deeper at the individual speeds, this likely was due to an additional data point used in my averages for my VPN speed tests, but also the individual connections between the endpoint speed test servers. Not all speed test servers will have the same bandwidth capabilities. Some clearly achieve better bandwidth than others, even if they are physically farther away. Nonetheless, taking those factors into account, my results in this test were more indicative of higher bandwidth capability to the endpoint server due to their infrastructure and not due to a VPN tunnel while over Wi-Fi. This just goes to show the multitude of complexities and variables that make up your experience while using the internet. Overall, I enjoyed my experience with the EncRouter. While their hardware is not custom designed, they chose a great base to build upon. The hardware enables the performance the average consumer expects using a Wi-Fi 6 router with room to grow, such as using the USB 3 port for features like file sharing and tethering. The user experience is truly the central piece of their offering, making a home network-wide VPN solution as easy as tapping a button. While it does lack some software features you'd find in other routers, such as guest Wi-Fi or VPNing into your home network from a personal device outside of your network, these features seem likely to come in future updates. And finally, with their new Home Link feature, you can connect two or more home networks together in the easiest way possible, letting you access devices on the other network and utilize that other network's outbound internet connection as your own. If a router like this suits your needs, Check out the Amazon link below to pick one up. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. What's your take on the Enk router? Would you replace your home router with one? Draw me a comment below so we can discuss it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.